I don't need this. I got this. I'm making sure this. Oh, how is? Yeah. Okay. We're good. Just 
uh, quickly how the ATM works so that you have a, a, an idea. So we have the ATM on, on the right side, and it, it is going to connect via a list line or a modem dialog into the host computer, which is like the internet service provider, so that it gets connects to the bank. And when you enter your card, you, it's going to read the six uh, digits of your card. Then it knows what's the bank associated with your card, and then we'll route the transaction to the bank. And we will validate your PIN number, the amount that you want to withdraw, and if it is accepted, it will come back, send an acknowledged return to the ATM, saying, okay, you can withdraw the money. So that's kind of the communication between the ATM and bank all the time. There are two types of ATM malware. Uh, the ones which is attacking the card holders, that means they are going to steal information from your debit card. When you enter the card, they will steal your account information, expiration date, the PIN, which is encrypted, but we will see how they crack it. Uh, this is less sophisticated because it is just a process inside the ATM running, just grabbing the locks and sending out in different forms. We will see how they send it out. Uh, but it is not sophisticated. I mean, you can just see a process running and they don't do anything else. But that's the ROI. The return of investment is that one because that they use that information for carding process to clone your debit card. And the second attempt is to empty ATMs. So that one is more sophisticated because they need to talk to the middleware. We will see how they do that. So they need to understand how the middleware in the ATM works. Uh, so that they can interact and ask just the ATM to get the money. Each cassette in, in an ATM can have either, uh, the cassette in the ATM is the one who holds the money. It can be $2,000 or up to $25,000 in it, depending on the ATM. So if you are in a mall, probably you will have around uh, $15,000. If you are in a liquor store, it probably will be just $500, something like that. It depends. But it is also, that's why it's a target. Previous attack ATMs, uh, this, this is nothing new. Uh, we have seen info stealers, as I said, uh, grabbing a PII, personal identifiable information, like your credit or debit card. Uh, in Russia, in 2009, it was a well-known attack against ATMs. Um, they also use skimmers. The skimmers are those hardware that they put into the ATM so that it put it on top of the card reader or on top of, of the pin pad so that when you enter your need or you enter your card, it will be read by the deposit, by the device, and it will send it via SMS message right after you enter it to the criminal. Uh, that was that's a very common one. Um, oh, as you know, Barnaby Jack, he talked about and a vulner vulnerability found in the ATMs. That was a vulnerability, but in this case, it's not even a vulnerability. We will see that it's just a common process to interact with the middleware, and you don't need to hack anything. Uh, all major vendors, all ATM vendors are affected in either way, so it's not something that someone is uh, safe about this attack. <laughs> Why ATM malware? Obviously because they get free money, uh, no need to break into the vault, they just need to transfer the, the malware into the ATM. Uh, and the carding process. The carding process is at the end to clone your debit card, sell it in the market. Uh, even they can sell the debit card numbers with per state, per country. Because as you know, if someone is trying to withdraw money with your debit card, probably if you live in Chicago and you are trying to withdraw it from even Minnesota or any other state, can be detec detected by the bank. So they even uh, group all those different DOMs based on country, state, and either and zip code. This is just an example of a DOM in the market. So they usually sell like track one, track two, as I said, uh, like they said in USA, UK, Canada, any all, all many countries, and they they just um, you send the money via well, Western Union or now yeah, they also accept Bitcoin. Okay, so how the malware spits money? Uh, obviously by breaking into the vault, which is hard, but it is possible. The second option is to steal cardholder information so that they can get information cloned in a debit card and then withdraw the money with your, uh, with your debit card. The, the problem here is that you, you won't realize that you're losing money until something is happening in your account. Uh, 
Uh, at that time, you will report to the bank, and probably they will pay you, but the criminal, they already have that money, because they got it from the ATM directly. Uh, stealing transaction logs, and the other thing is controlling the ATM middleware. We will talk about that. Bluetooth is one sample of controlling the ATM middleware. So, so what the, the first step is coding the malware. So the requirements is that the hackers, they need a real ATM, right? So they cannot just prepare proof of concepts or just uh, uh, try to play with it and just transfer into the ATM and pray that it's going to work. So they have ATMs. So um, I want to show you this. So this one is in uh, Mexico. So you can see these two uh, ATMs stolen directly from the wall. Uh, when you see this, you can think like, oh, these guys are going to get the money in the garage. They will going to break into the vault. Obviously, that's one option. But mainly, what they are doing is they are getting the, the, the ATM so that they can give it to the hackers. They can reverse if, if they want to reverse the ATM software and then come up with a proof of concept so that they can test it and once it's ready, deploy it uh, into the different countries. Um, they, they need to go to, a, there are many ATM maintenance uh, sites where they can ask questions and, and we will see that example here. Uh, the, the configuration, they need to understand how it works, where are the, the transaction logs in store, everything, with the encryption keys, and they need to understand the WASA XFS. I'm going to talk about WASA XFS, which is the framework that every ATM uses in, in, in when they are running in Windows operating system. So this is just an example of how they, be, they are being training in, in, in the forums. So this is one guy who is in, in bankcube.ru. It's a Russian forum. So obviously, it's, they, they are using translation and to talk to these ATM guys. The ATM guys in this forum, they are always helping each other. Like, I have a problem in the receipt, I have a problem in the card reader. They help each other, you know, in a, in a good way. But these guys go to that places and say, hey, you know, like this example. The, this is a law, which is the transaction law between the ATM and the bank. And it's clear that they have a working ATM, right? So they are asking why the pin is uh, masked. So they are asking in the, in the forum if there is a way to unmask the, unmask the pins. Obviously, these people is, is uh, asking why do you want to, do, to know that, but they just focus on getting the, the information. So for example, if they are talking about CCProt here, right? So we don't know what is CCProt, but again, you go to internet and it is public. Here it says, CCProt, all host to terminal and terminal to host messages will be stored in this file. The CC prod in the transaction log is just in one ATM vendor. There are many others in other vendors. So this guy is trying to understand that specific uh, ATM vendor, how it works, and how the pins are being masked inside. After this guy, I decided to track this guy. His, his, uh, his nickname is Matlex. It's right there. So I noticed the transaction log is in Spanish. So then I start tra tracing this guy, and then he had a profile in internet that is claiming he is from Venezuela, which makes sense because it is in Spanish and then from Venezuela. So I went to Venezuela and I found this site where this guy is uh, pasting the same transaction log that we saw in the forum before, exactly the same, but now he's teaching how to crack pins from, from the logs. And actually he, he was also selling this tool so that he can offer the services to crack pins from, from, um, from the ATMs. Now, this is important here is that the ATMs, now they are supposed to use triple DES for encryption, but the old ATMs use DES, so it is easy to crack. And it is uh, mostly in Latin America, it is, it is the major market of this, because uh, in USA probably, I don't know, but probably they have newer ATMs, but Latin America, they still have and all ATMs. This another one is on, uh, online training. You can go to internet, find this programming language, which is going to teach you how to interact with the ATM. Uh, this is a legitimate um, uh, tutorial from the ATM vendor, but it is obviously leaked in internet. Okay, so that's the first step to train the hackers. The second step is to infect in the ATM. So the Bluetooth installation, if you, if you heard about Bluetooth last year, it was a malware which was emptying ATMs. 
Everyone talks about the CD-ROM. The CD-ROM, they said that they transferred the malware into the ATM via a CD-ROM. Uh, so people is saying always, but you know what, ATM is not gonna work because uh, you need a person who, who go to the ATM, open it, and transfer the, the, the malware to the ATM. That's not possible because you have cameras, you have guards, you have everyone. But that's not the case. Actually, what they do is uh, they hire employees. So when they hire employees, bank employees, or ATM technicians, so they can transfer the malware. And they are authorized to interact with the ATM. So there is no, nothing suspicious there. Uh, so, and also, when they transfer the malware, sometimes the ATM needs to be uh, restarted. And it takes about five minutes for an for ATM to restart. So can, can you imagine a guy opening the ATM with the guards there and people around and trying to, you know, blow the CD-ROM or the USB? So that's, that's obviously, it's not feasible. So, and in the underground, it's also well known. So this guy is, is the guy who created the tool, the cracking tool. He said that to every car flown in airport, always there is an internal confederate in the bank. These bank employees help to transfer the malware to the ATM. So if you see this picture, you can see these guys, I mean, I'm not saying these guys are bad, right? So they are just ATM technicians. But you can see one guy like fixing the cassette, and the other one at the top, they said, oh, let me block this USB, and suddenly we just transfer it and infect the ATM. So they don't need to know anything, they just get the USB blocked into the ATM, and they just get paid. That's it. They don't know anything in the internal workings. So that's, 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 that's the reason, because all the people says, oh no, the ATM doesn't work. You can see it in New York Times, it's working. So it's, it's easy. Obviously, this is more common in Latin America, I don't know in USA, but in Latin America, it's very common with low salaries. You can easily hire uh, bank employees. They, they, they get low salary, so they can get easy money. They can. Portability. So they need to make sure that the, the, the software, the, the malware, will work in all different ATM versions, right? Because they want to go to every single state or country and, and try to make it work. So Bluetooth, for example, it, 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 what it does was he just copied the whole uh, ATM software. He has its own legitimate software from the ATM vendor. Just copy it into the Windows directory with the malware. So when the malware runs, it just uses those DLLs and those specific ones. It, those are not signed, by the way. So they don't care about what is running. They just put into the ATM. Obviously, they know that the ATM vendor, which is important, but after that, they just paste their own ATM software, which is a legitimate one, obviously stolen, so that they can run it in that version. So that way, they guarantee it can run in any other uh, version. The step three is interacting with the malware. Okay, so they are trained. They prefer the the malware. They transfer it into the to the ATM. Now they need to go to the ATM and interact with it, right? To get the money or to steal data. So interacting with the malware, uh, one is via a GUI. So they can uh, they can just have a, like the GUI that we see in the ATM when we withdraw money. They have their own interface, touch screen. So if it, the malware is already the ATM is already infected, so they just touch screen and get money out of it. Normally they need to enter a specific combination because. Uh, they don't want others to find it and just get the money out. So they generate a, a, a combination which is the access code. So they enter it and they get the money. Uh, via external keyboard, so you have an ATM, you open it, you plug an ATM keyboard like a um, keyboard from a router. It's like you're just to interact with the, with the ATM. Uh, that's very common for ATM technicians, they do that. Or when they get the, um, the ATM into the garage, they just block the keyboard and they can interact with the, with the ATM malware. Directly in the pin path also, so they can just, in the pin path, they can enter the specific combinations and they can interact with the malware. Uh, the control card into the reader, so this, this is also an advanced one because they get a specific card, they enter it into the ATM, there is a process inside already injected into the card reader process, which is just waiting for that specific combination. So they can create fake cards. So say they, when they enter in, the process is going to say, OK, this is a specific combination, and I know the, the guy who is behind me, the criminal, who is going to interact with me, with the malware. 
uh, USB controller, so when they get to the, to get to the ATM, they plug a USB. There is a process internally running, checking the USB being plugged into the ATM. When it detects one, it checks the, in the root folder if there is a file. If the file has a specific uh, name, like in this case with extend, extension XXX, that's just one example, uh, they said, okay, this is coming from the criminal, right? And then, what do you want me to do? So if the root folder says like Bell, or Bill in this case, it, it will delete itself, the malware. If it says copy, it will copy all information gathered into the USB, so that way they can interact with the malware. But you can imagine, again, this, this cannot be done by criminals, right? This is also the guys who just plug in the USB, get the information, and just send it to them, to the criminals. So that's the way it works. SMS message, this was a well-known one uh, last year via Bluetooth. So it's, it's just a phone attached to the USB uh, port. So as you know, the, 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 um, the cell phone can have a USB port, so you just use it to charge into the ATM. That way they don't, they don't need to charge the, the phone again. It is, they leave it inside, and then they just send an SMS message to the phone. There is another process internally. Keep in mind always this whole thing, the, the, the ATM is already infected. So then uh, when they send an SMS message, uh, there is a process internally listening in the USB port, as soon as they see that there is a USB, uh, sorry, an SMS message, message coming into the phone, they will translate it into an ATM command, the speed of money. The way they connect the ATM to the, to the phone is many ways. One is differing, as you use your phone to connect to internet through your phone in your laptop, that's called differing. So basically you route your laptop both to internet via your phone, so this is both different, and that's also one way for them to, to do it. Obviously, they need to find specific cell phones because some cell phones have specific drives, uh, sorry, drivers, so that it can be difficult for them. But there are some Android phones or any other phone which is easy to install, and they don't require too much effort during installation. <clears throat> now, getting the stolen data for money, uh, how do they do that? Uh, they can print it into the receipt, so they get information there. They can print it, in, print it into, the, into the screen, or they can send an SMS message. Like as I said, the skimmer, as soon as you enter something, it's gonna be sent via SMS message to the attackers. And how do they get the money? As I said, they enter, they enter in a specific combination in the pin pad or the external keyboard or the SMS message in order to get the money. Every ATM, I mean, it depends on the vendor, but there are two types of, of ATM. The one which has a, a, a small, do, uh, a small uh, door in the dispenser, it's going to be open just a little bit. That is going to allow to get uh, 40 bills only. So it, that means that the, the attackers can get 40 bills in one round, depending on the denomination. Assuming that they get money from the cassette four, which is $50 the denomination, and they get around 40 bills, they will get around $2,000 just for one cycle. Uh, how, they, how that data is, is, is stolen? Uh, Identify the transaction log. Uh, they, they need to know what is the transaction log. Uh, they, they also put fake screens so that the user thinks the, pin, the, 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 the screen to enter the pin, they create their own screen in the, in the ATM so they can steal that information. Man in the middle attack, they, what they do is, uh, every ATM has a gateway to connect to the bank. So what they do is, they understand how the, way, the gateway, gate, gateway works, they replace the registry key with the new configuration with their own gateway, they obviously create a new binary, which means they understand exactly how that gateway works. So when the, the, the bank and the ATM wants to communicate, they will go to the registry, check with the gateway configuration, and we grab the one from the guys, from the, from the criminals. And then they use that gateway to communicate to the bank. Then they will change the configuration uh, files so that instead of going to the bank, they will point to the local socket in the ATM. That way they go, the traffic, they uh, route all the traffic through their own socket and then they can intercept the information. But still, even in intercepting the information, the pins are encrypted because when you enter the pin in the pin pad, 
it cannot get out of the device in, uh, unencrypted. It's by law, it, uh, it is encrypted. So they still need to crack the, the pin numbers, for example. So, but what if they want to uh, be able to decrypt everything from an ATM? There is something which are the encryption keys. Every time you set up an ATM, the bank is going to issue some encryption keys. Those encryption keys are going to be the ones to encrypt the encryption sessions in every transaction between the ATM and the bank. That means that if, you, if, if, the, if the attackers have access to those encryption keys, they can decrypt everything from the ATM. The thing is that those encryption keys are entered in a standard way across the ATM uh, vendors. So they have a specific window like this, which says enter uh, master keys, and they have a specific title. Uh, the title is enter the A key, you can see there, enter A key and enter B key. This is a 16 bytes uh, size key, uh, each one, A 16 bytes, B 16 bytes, and they need to enter it. So the malware is going to watch for, the, for that window, for, for that window, it's going to be saying, find window, find window, and when they detect that that window is displayed in the ATM, they will grab all the information from, 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 from there. So, so they, they, they can decrypt everything from the ATM. Usually, these encryption keys are changed every year, probably, I don't think so, but it's supposed to be every year, or by request by the bank. So as soon as they get it, they can take it everything. But, okay, so we we'll talk about this, but let's now finally check how the ATM is found, right? How we get money out of it? Uh, actually, you, as I said, you don't need to exploit anything. Uh, you just need to learn how to interact with the, with the middleware. The middleware is called WASA XFS. This is the extension, extension for financial services that was developed by Microsoft so that um, any time you want to run ATM software on Windows, you use this framework, which is WASA XFS. It's open source, so you can up download it from internet, run it in your Visual Studio, and obviously you need an ATM, but, but you can play with, with that information. VS Plus, the programming language exposed in internet, someone can easily try to come up with a, with a proof of concept, unfortunately. This provides a common API, a API to manipulate the ATM hardware. Basically, and it is vendor uh, independent. So basically, this is the way it works. We have the ATM application at the top. This is the legitimate one for the one created by the hackers. So they talk to the XFS manager, uh, via the APIs, and the service manager is going to uh, route all the requests to the different service providers. The service providers are the card reader, the printer, the dispenser, all the hardware inside, inside the ATM, that's called service provider. So what, when you, as an ATM application, you want to interact with any of those uh, hardware, you need to open a session with the XFS manager, who is going to say, okay, do you want to enter the card? Okay, let me transfer to the card reader. Do you want to uh, uh, dispense money? Okay, I'm going to transfer you to the dispenser. So that way, the XFS manager interacts with the, with the application. So how they, how, how, how they dispense bills? So this is the, some APIs that they use. Uh, this is a standard one. You can, you can see this in, in every single documentation. So they use the WFSL register that sends a request to the, to the hardware via the XFS manager to say, hey, I want to talk to you. Then the, the WS open opens a session with the dispenser in this case. If you want to get money, you open a session with the session with the dispenser. If you want to read from PinPad, you open a session with the PinPad. If you want to print something, you open a session with the printer. So you interact with the hardware that way. Then once you open a session, you lock it so that it is exclusive use, so that you can just interact with it, no one else. And then you run the execute dispense, which is the API to dispense the money. Is that it, that's the only thing that, that they need to do. And, but some, some ATM software uh, doesn't allow to interact directly with the dispenser. So let's say that you create your proof of concept, you put it in the ATM, and you run it, it you will, sometimes you, get a, you, you will get a, an error saying, hey, you cannot open a session with the dispenser. The dispenser is not going to talk to you. Probably, I don't know, probably that's a security measure, but what the, what, the, what the people have done was they found out that there is a supervisor mode. The supervisor mode is all the uh, maintenance related uh, activities. 
So when the ATM guys get into the ATM, they open it. So they will change the cassettes, they will put more money, they will check the display, everything. That's in supervisor mode. That means it's a mode only uh, depending on the vendor so that they can do configuration changes, everything. When, when they are in the supervisor mode, all the hardware will attend the supervisor mode. It's like, it's like a, the boss. It will send a request to what the hardware and it will say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm in supervisor mode. I, I stop doing whatever you are doing, dispenser, printer, and just wait for my instructions. So then that way, uh, this, uh, the criminals are gonna switch to supervisor mode so that they, uh, the ATM is gonna think, okay, it is supervisor, I am gonna attend any request, and that way they can interact with, uh, interact with, the, with the dispenser. So they try to talk to the dispenser, but the dispenser, I said, I don't, wanna talk, I don't wanna talk to you, so they switch to supervisor mode by an API also, following the framework. The ATM switched to supervisor mode, and now they try to talk to the dispenser and the dispenser is going to say, yeah, I can talk to you because you are a supervisor. It's like having system account in, in Windows. So that way they bypass that, that, that uh, technique. Um, but why is, is, is that easy? Well, you can see that when they switch to supervisor mode, there is no authentication. So you can do it via software. So you can just request access to supervisor mode. They will say yes. They will open a session, but there is no authentication needed. Also, when you open sessions with a dispenser or any other hardware, you don't need to do that. Sorry, you don't need to authenticate. You just open the session, so that means you have your proof of concept, you just put it in the ATM, and you can start talking to the hardware. So that should be something that should not be allowed, right? It should be some authentication in between, so that they say, hey, this is another process, not within my framework in the ATM software, so I'm not gonna talk to you, so that kind of solution. Some ATM malware misunderstandings. Uh, as I said, people says it doesn't work because you need to transfer the malware to the ATM. As I explained, that's not a, a that's not an issue. Actually, it's pretty pretty easy to install the malware in in, in the ATM by hiring bank employees. Um, all, all, other people says that it is easy to hack because it runs on Windows XP. Keep in mind that this is not a Windows hack. I mean, if you get access to the ATM running Windows, you can have even system access. But that doesn't mean you will get the money out. You will need to talk to the middleware to, to, to ask it to get the money out. So that separate issue. So people say, oh, it's Windows XP, I'm gonna hack it. No, 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 you get access to the system, you can get the administrator pass or whatever. Uh, my, sorry, system is even better. And, and you, you, you still need to know how to talk to the ATM. How to prevent it? Well, physical security, as you see, uh, it's too much uh, too much effort on that, but uh, since the bank employees are being hired, so that's not an issue. Full disk encryption that helps if they uh, they get the ATM into the garage. So offline they cannot transfer anything into the hard disk, but if they transfer the malware online, that full disk encryption is not going to help. ATM sports hardening so that they, no one can just plug something into the ATM. That that must be some validation there. Authentication process, authentication at process level, so that the XFS manager, when it gets a request from some process to interact with it, it should be authenticated. Uh, enforce ATM dispense only when the authorization is coming back from the bank. As I explained before, when you get the confirmation from the bank to get the money, is when the ATM starts dispensing it. Why you can just talk to it directly and spend money? They should have a process in place to make sure that probably a token, one time token that they get from the bank and they can use it to dispense the money, but only that time if they can do that. If the attacker wants to withdraw the money, they need to know the token which is coming from the bank. So that way they don't know how to do it, how to guess it, because it's calculated in the bank uh, side. So that kind of things should be uh, implemented. Also, some role based on the authentication so that if someone is transferring the malware into the ATM and I'm the bank employee, I should have some role based on the authentication so that at least I know who installed this or this into the, into, into the ATM uh, <coughs> machine at specific times. At least it's going to be reactive, but at least they know who was who transferred the, 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 the malware. And very salaries probably <laughs> from the guys so that they don't work for 
modernize and so they can go for financial. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them here. Interested to know um, in Latin America, how big a problem is this? Uh, do you have uh, uh, any visibility? Well, um, I, 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 don't, I don't have numbers, but definitely uh, in 2013, uh, it was, uh, it is still uh, actually is going on right now. Uh, Bluetooth, which is the malware emptying ATMs, it is being emptying machines in Mexico all the 2013 and they are still getting uh, reports about this being done. They are just changing the packer. So they use the same software, but they just change the packer so that the antivirus cannot detect it. Uh, but it is in, in Mexico, and the guys creating these things are from Venezuela. So in Mexico, the criminals were caught, and, and there were hackers in Venezuela creating the software and uh, selling to Mexicans. So a follow-on, uh, have you heard uh, of any of this going on in Costa Rica or Panama? Uh, there's lots of, you know, obviously they both use U.S. dollars, so those would maybe be more attractive targets. Yeah, definitely. Well, no, it's very, it's very well known in Venezuela and Mexico, from Peru, but it's not common. I have not seen reports on those places, but the problem is that ATMs are so old that they can just keep in mind that the ATM software it is the same across the countries. I mean, you can change the language, but it is the same software. So whatever you run here is gonna run in Russia or Ukraine. So it's just a matter to get the contact, the local, who is able to transfer the malware. That's the main point. So it's pretty easy in Mexico, Latin America, right? But I don't know those countries. So as soon as, as, soon as they got someone who is able to transfer the malware, so they, they can work with them. It's the organized crime actually behind this. Yeah, but actually that's, that's, that's uh, the documented way to do it. Uh, if, if you go to underground forums and those, those different examples, they always talk about these guys who are going to kill them. And so it is the documented way to do it. And actually, it, to me, it makes sense because uh, otherwise you can be easily detected, you know, by the different physical security controls in place. So that's the way to go, I think, and they are going. Are you aware of any attacks that come through the network to do this? Yeah, there are some of them. I, I, I didn't have it documented here, but the, there are some other attacks which is in the bank right there. So they have the point-to-point -point connection, and then they hack into the network, and from there they can get into the, to the ATM. Yes? Uh, with the master keys, are those used to encrypt the CDB on the credit cards? Yeah, uh, well, the, the CVB is, is also encrypted coming from the, uh, into your card. The PIN and the CVB is already encrypted. So by law, it cannot be in plain text. Uh, some of them even doesn't even have that number in your, in your debit card. It is in the bank. So they just uh, check it with, uh, once you do the transaction. But those, the PIN and the CVB is always encrypted. They don't even go plain text in the world. They don't need the master keys. Answer your question. They don't even need the master keys because they are already encrypted. The master keys will encrypt the transaction, the whole transaction between the ATM and the bank, but, but those specific fields are already encrypted. So is, is changing the master key every year, is that a security problem or does it actually help? Well, actually, to be honest, uh, I don't know if it is every year. I, 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 I know that it is it's just one time when it is, the ATM is being set up, because actually they get, I think, a physical envelope. It's not even software. So they get some specific, uh, because it's, they try to do it very secure, because obviously it's the encryption keys, it's the whole thing. So, and they just do it one time. I'm guessing it's one, is every year, because it's supposed to be that way, but 
I'm, I guess I'm bad that this is not even changed, right? So I don't know. <coughs> oh, unfortunately, when you talk about these things with the ATM vendors, they don't they don't talk to you about it. So if you ask them, hey, how it works, or I have this malware, or I am analyzing this, they don't talk to you. And then if you talk about something, they don't want you to talk about it, but at the same time, they don't want to share anything. So that's, we don't have that information. Yes? How long does it take to physically dump a cash drawer when they're standing there waiting for it to come out? Yeah, well, see, see just one round, it is around uh, 30 seconds. Just one round. Yeah, it is it, that fast. Uh, it, depending on the machine, because some machines are old, so, so they just start counting the cash. And you can you can hear it like like rah, 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 and then they get the money. So those are old ones, but the new ones, uh, not new ones, but better than those, uh, they do it faster. So but it is around 30 or even 15 seconds. So for example, when you send an SMS message, uh, by the time you send the SMS message, get it into the ATM and dispense the money is 15 seconds. Did they disable the video camera? I mean, how do they evade getting caught that way? They just no, no, no. There with a bag. Yeah. So they, they just they just get into the ATM and that's the mule. The mule take that risk because they will get there. They will get the money and run or something like that. I think it, there is no way. But some of them also they they pretend to be withdrawing money, right? So they put the card because it's the camera there. So do you imagine they put the card and the camera is saying, "Oh, this guy is gonna get money," right? They don't know there is an SMS message coming, right? So when they plug, they enter the car and then suddenly the company is, the money is coming out. The company is thinking the money is coming out just because you enter the pin number, whatever. But they don't know the SMS is coming. So obviously, uh, but this is like uh, they they are emptying the ATMs. That means they have around five minutes withdrawing all the money, and then from there they, they just escape. But uh, the malware is able to choose the cassette. The cassette is going to be the highest denomination. So they will check the cassettes, they will check what is this denomination, 5, 20, uh, 40, 50, even, I don't know if it is 100, I don't think so, but let's say 50. So they choose that, uh, that cassette and get the money out of it. And they just cycle it. It's just a cycle running and just getting the money out. So there are 20 of the ATMs which has this um, um, a small, uh, Recycle, no, a small bin when the money is coming out as it is, and there is another one which just open the door, right? So the ones who just open the door, they need to wait to get the money and then the next one, right? But the ones who just spit out the money, so they can just grab the money as it comes out. You know? So it depends. Yeah. Yes. Why do ATMs have USB ports and zero leverage when we give them by other bits? Oh yeah, no, well actually, yeah, they, since it, they are Windows machines, they use it just to install the ATM software. But they are Windows machines, so why don't we use special hardware for ATM, not just simply computers? Yeah, well actually, I think, I don't know, but I think it was a strategy because Microsoft created this whole thing. So they were trying to move ATM whole world into, into their world. So they come up with this XFS framework so that everything running in Windows need to be used this specific... It didn't change that. It didn't change that. Yeah, they didn't change it. It is an exactly a CPU, but as I said, it, it is not bad because uh, they can use the ports, but just make sure that it is uh, hardened so that no one can just plug in. That's a solution already for that. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't, is this going to be posted? Oh, this plan. Yeah, but the, the slides. So the slides also. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I can I can share it also. Um, the slides are captured. The slides are captured. See, here, here is my. This is my email. So if you do you want the slides? Send me uh, it's email. not on the screen. The screen. Uh, yeah, slide it over. <laughs> Press the end key. Just end? press the end key. It'll jump straight to the bottom. Okay. So that's, this is this is not. I want to make it. Okay. 
So this is the, the email. If, if you want uh, the slides, I can share. Any other question? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.